By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim. Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And we have reached round number three of the Urborg Alliance Plains Pillage, the old school tournament in Germany. And in round number three, oh boy, oh boy, we have something cool for you because we are going to look at a match between a poison deck and a Labricon, Labricon Ward deck. So I'm really looking forward to that. And there are actually two German players, Philip and Stefan, who are playing against each other here in round number three. Now, before I start with the deck decks, I just want to mention that you can check the description below. There you will find a timestamp. And when you click on the timestamp, that will take you directly to the game. So if you want to skip the deck deck, or if you want to watch the deck deck afterwards, you can do that by just going down to the des description below and click on the timestamp that says take me to the games and that will take you to game number one. As for here, we are going to start with the actual deck deck. So I've got deck pictures of both of these decks. I think they look really cool. So I'm looking forward to actually doing these deck decks. And we're going to start with the poison deck that's being uh, piloted by Philip. And here we see the deck of Philip. Now look at this, isn't it beautiful? You can see the base of this deck is really the poison creatures. And just to uh, to walk you through this, if you're not familiar with the poison creatures in old school, uh, you've got four marsh vipers. It's a creature from the dark. It's a green creature, one green and three to cast. It's a one, two creature. And when it attacks and is unblocked, it deals one damage because it's a one, two, but it also leaves two poison counters uh, with the opponent. And as soon as the opponent has 10 poison counters, he or she dies. Now the other poison creature in this deck and in old school is Pit Scorpion. So he's also playing with four pit scorpions, one black, one black and two to cast. It's a one, one. And when this one attacks, it also deals one damage. But when it's unblocked, it only leaves one poison counter behind. So unfortunately, not two, only one, but still it's a poison counter. So he's got eight poison creatures. Now he wants to make these creatures unblockable because they're not very strong by themselves. So what, what he's done is he's put in a full play set of Dwarven Warriors. Now Dwarven Warriors is a card, one red and two to cast. It's a one, one, and you can tap it and it can make target creature with power two or less unblockable. So he can use Dwarven Warriors to make his Marsh Viper or Pit Scorpion unblockable. And the Taunus is one that's right next to the Dwarven Warriors. That does the same thing. It's an um, artifact from the antiquities, four to cast, uh, two and tap, and it makes a uh, creature of power two or less unblockable as well. So basically he's got six uh, creatures and, and artifacts that can make um, you know, his uh, poison creatures unblockable. So that's what he wants to do. And then interestingly enough, he's also playing with a full play set of Birds of Paradise. And actually, when I think about it, it makes sense because Marsh Viper is four to cast, Pit Scorpion is three to cast. So you kind of want to ramp into them. And Birds of Paradise is just a really good way to do that, especially since this deck is playing with four colors. The only color that's not in this deck is white. So he's playing with four colors. You also see he's playing with three Moxen, the Jet, the Ruby, and the Sapphire. So he can make those colors as well. And he's also playing with blue power. I think it's great to see players like Philip who probably have a beautiful collection, who choose to do something different, who think, you know, I want to make poison work and I want to see if I can win a match or if I can win a couple of games at a tournament. And I'm going to try to make the strongest poison deck in old school. I know I'm probably not going to make top eight. I know there's no way that I'm going to win a tournament with this, but I still want to try to do it because it's just so cool to play with poison, which was a brand new concept at the time. You know, you only had these two creatures and you can see by the fact that Marsh Viper and Pit Scorpion are just bad creatures that when they designed this, they really didn't know how powerful poison was going to be. So they were trying to be careful with this new way of winning a game. Um, so anyhow, we see the, the full power. Also interesting in this list are the two Blood Moons. I think against some decks, I can see Philip winning the game because of the Blood Moons, because usually in old school, people love to play with a lot of colors, actually like what Philip is doing. And you can do that because of City of Brass, because of the Dual Lands, because of the Moxen, because of the Black Lotus. But when you're facing with a Blood Moon, for certain decks, a Blood Moon is just so incredibly lethal. And Basically, what Philip really wants to do is, is, is use the Blood Moon to make sure his opponent cannot do anything and then he can just keep attacking with his poison creatures and kill his opponent. Remember, 10 poison counters is enough to win a game. So that, that's only five hits from the Marsh Viper. So who knows? Maybe he's going to succeed. 
Uh, let's take a look at uh, Stefan's deck first, and then we'll go to the games. Let's take a look at the deck of Stefan. And here we see the deck of Stefan Lebrecon Ward. And this whole deck kind of revolves around one creature. You can see it on the screen now, the Ailing Lebrecon. It's one green to cast a 1-1 from Legends, and it reads, all creatures that block or, or are blocked by the Lebrecon become, become green creatures. So if you put a green ward on the Lebrecon, you can just block and attack with it. It cannot die, and it turns all the creatures of the opponent green. Now, why is that a good thing? Well, if you're playing the Lebrecon ward deck, you're playing with Circle of Protections green, so that's really helpful. You're also playing in this case, and I really like this inclusion, uh, Stefan, with a Veteran Bodyguard. So what can happen in this matchup is that he puts a green ward on his Veteran Bodyguard, and then um, whatever creatures attack, it cannot kill him because all the damage will go to his Veteran Bodyguard, all the creatures of his opponent will be turned green because of the Lebrecon, and you know the green creatures deal damage to a creature with a green ward on it. So there you are, he cannot die. Another interesting thing here is the Circle of Protection is green in combination with Force of Nature. When you don't pay the upkeep cost of Force of Nature, you take eight damage, but the eight damage comes from a green source, so you can use your Circle of Protection green to prevent that damage. Another interesting card here is the If Biff Afrit, a 3-3 flyer from the Arabian Nights with the building hurricane effect. For one green, it deals one damage to everybody and one damage to all the flyers. Now again, with the Circle of Protection uh, green, uh, Stefan can prevent the damage from his own If Biff to himself. So he can just prevent that damage, no problem. He's also playing with one hurricane main, by the way. And of course, the green wards also work in a way if, every, if all the creatures of your opponent are green, then the green ward, of course, becomes much more useful for Stefan to use. So a really interesting deck. I really like these one-off inclusions like the Skull of Orm, like um, the Fragurian Enchantress that I see there, beautiful black boarded one, by the way. Uh, I also see a Bazaar of Baghdad in this deck. That is pretty cool. So overall, it's a really nice deck. And I'm actually curious how it's going to work. And I think these are two decks I can both see them win. For me, I think the Leprechaun Ward deck is, is a slight favorite for me. So let's go to the games and let's see what's going to happen. Let's go to game one. Game number one here at round number three of the Urborg Plains Pillage, the old school tournament in Dusseldorf, Germany. And we can see Stefan who is taking a mulligan, putting a card on the bottom of his library. I believe he's on the play and he's playing with the Leprechaun Ward deck. There we see a Savannah into his script sprites and a pass turn here. And Philip, who is on his poison deck, starting with a Birds of Paradise and passing turn. So both players having one drops here, as is to be expected when you're looking at their deck lists. And there's an attack here. Probably Philip is going to take the damage and he's going to drop to 19. And what will we see next here? Another script sprites. So that means some extra damage or pressure, I should say, for Philip. And there, this is what Philip wants to do. Play his poison creatures as fast as he can. And there's a pit scorpion turn number two. That means that next turn he, he can start attacking. And I, I wonder if Stefan is going to hold back a pixies to just block and trade for the pit scorpion. There's also a COP green. So all he needs now really is a Lebrechaun and he needs to start making green creatures. A double attack by the Script Sprite. So that means that the Pit Scorpion can deal damage and that we'll see a poison counter on the side of Stefan. There's an attack here and he's going to take and the damage and he's going to get a poison counter. The nice thing is that uh, Philip actually has poison counters. So that's pretty cool. And I guess they're using this button to put their poison counters on. So a first poison counter for Stefan. And remember when he has 10, he is dead. Doesn't matter what his life total is. As soon as you have 10 poison counters, you're dead. But I mean, Philip has a long way to go still. And uh, let's see, it seems like he wants to play out another card. It's looking at his hand. And there we see a tap of three. Oh, a mind twist for two. That is pretty nice. Look at that. It's losing two if biff if freets there. And with that COP green, those if biffs are pretty powerful. And, uh, well, that means that probably all that Stefan can do is just attack, which is not too bad, actually. That means he's going to drop to 15, and he's passing turn here. And he's attacking. That means another damage and another poison counter. So two poison counters so far for Stefan. 
Let's see what Philip can do. Is he going to play, for example, a Marsh Viper? He's got enough land for it. Although the Marsh Viper is not very strong, actually, because of that COP green. Okay, so we see a Demonic Tutor, and I wonder what he's going to look up. I think Ancestral Recall is kind of the most obvious choice, but he's also pretty low on cards, so... I guess you don't want to want to look up a time twister after your own mind twists. He's not going to do that, but maybe a time walk, because then he can put an extra counter on. I guess I guess you would look up ancestral recall in this uh, in this uh, scenario, but who knows? And of course, I cannot see his hand, and you know Philip knows how to play his own deck, so I'm just curious to see what choice he has made. He still has three untapped lands, so. Cutting the deck here. Let's see what he's going to do. Three land sale. Tapping two. Oh, there's a time walk. Interesting. So he's choosing to go for that extra poison counter instead of the... Oh, there's also an ancestral recall. <laughs> well, if you've got both, what a luxury. Man, this is such a good turn here for, for Philip. And really, you can see that blue power doing work here. That means he can attack him and deal an extra poison counter. Yeah, that's exactly what he's going to do. So... That means Stefan's going to drop to 17 and get a third poison counter. And what's going to happen next? There is a Marsh Viper. Unfortunately, the Marsh Viper is just not very strong against its COP green. And I think this is a problem for Philip because he doesn't play with white, so he doesn't have access to Disenchance. Not sure if he has Tranquility in the sideboard, but I think he'll need Tranquility against this deck. There is a Lebrechaun. So remember, everything the Labricon blocks turns into a green creature. And I think in this case, the, just the Labricon it's, itself is kind of blocking off the Pit Scorpion. And the Marsh Viper cannot really do anything because of that COP green. He is attacking though, but there's of course the COP green activation, no damage, another Marsh Viper. I mean, things were looking really good for Philip, but now things are looking pretty bad for him. He's still taking damage from the script sprites. He's on 10 life. There is a basic forest. And here is an attack. That means he's going to drop to 8. Untapping here. I mean, I can see this going completely wrong for, for Philip. He needs a solution for the green uh, circle protection green. If he can do that, then he basically has two marsh vipers. And he can start putting poison counters on, uh, on Stefan again. But... As long as that COP green is there, look at that, another Labricon. Because in all honesty, Stefan is not even drawing that great. But Philip is just completely shut down because of that COP green. There we see a strip mine. Taking care of a basic forest. Interesting. So I guess he has a blood moon, perhaps? I guess it's a good choice since he's playing with two blood moons main. And he wants to make sure that he doesn't have four mana or, or, or five to play out bigger creatures. I think that's the reason why um, Philip is doing this, playing a basic forest. And just passing turn. He's on six. He's just slowly going to die. Of course, he can start chump blocking with his Birds of Paradise. He's got more than enough mana. So first, he's going to take some more damage, going down to four. Man, I mean... That turn where he played Ancestral Recall and Time Walk, I kind of thought, okay, maybe he's got a chance here. Okay, this is interesting. A Time Twister, I'm really liking this. And both players are going to shuffle their graveyard back in and, and then they're going to draw seven new cards. Now, of course, the problem here for Philip is that he's also giving uh, Stefan seven fresh cards. And he's on four, so that's not great. And I think... If you're Philip, you're hoping for something to get rid of the COP green. Right? I mean, and you want to stay alive. So I guess you want to stay alive first. So maybe something to take care of those two script sprites. But um, things are not looking great for, for Philip, in all honesty. And there we see. It's a nice technique to cut your deck, by the way. We see Stefan doing, uh, doing a similar thing. So both players drawing seven fresh cards. I believe uh, Stefan and Philip are friends, by the way. So they know each other. 
And uh, Philip also organizes tournaments online uh, under Alpha Castle. I think that's kind of the name for his events. It's at a castle. And he also wrote a blog about this poison deck. And I'll put a link in the description below to the actual blog. So if you're interested in that, you can read it. And there is a giant spider being cast. So that's actually a great solution to the two script sprites. So I think that's problem number one, check. And now the next problem he needs to solve is the COP green. But at least this will buy him some time, hopefully. Of course, I mean, you know, Stefan is playing with white, so he has access to some removal as well. Let's see what he's going to do, having a full grip of cards at Pendlehaven. He can use it to pump his 1-1 one, one creatures. There we see a green ward, and of course the giant spider is green. And there he attacks, and that means he cannot block with his green creature, so he's going to take damage here. He's going to go down to 3. He can actually use the Pendlehaven to pump, but he's not doing it. That's interesting. I kind of expected him to just to pump. Maybe he has another plan. And let's see. A lot of land here for, for Philip. I think a, a big problem for Philip here, and I kind of missed, I kind of missed an attack. Like, Ooh, another mind with that is mean. That is mean, man. Look at that. Losing a Chaos Orb and some other goodies there. And, oh, this is interesting, a Dwarven Warrior, so he can start making his Poison Creatures unblockable, but I think he doesn't have enough time because that's, um, the Script Sprites cannot be blocked. That's his big problem. Now, another Green War, that means he can deal two damage without using the Pendlehaven. He can now activate the Pendlehaven. That's exactly what he does, and I believe he's going to win here. Yeah, he's going to win three damage. And this is game one for Stefan. So game one, despite having two mind twists against him, I think what's really working against uh, Philip here in this matchup is that he's playing with the color green. And, you know, Philip is playing with a play set of, of green wards and three COP, or sorry, Stefan, with a play set of green wards and three COP greens. So obviously that's going to be really, really tough um for philip and maybe if we have a look at his deck list we can see if he actually plays uh with any um with any um tranquilities in the sideboard and looking at his list he's not playing with any tranquilities in the sideboard so i i think philip this is going to be really tough but who knows let's give these players some time to sideboard and we'll catch back up with them in game number two Game number two, and Stefan leads with one game, and that means that Philip is on the play. And look at that, Stefan taking another mulligan. He did the same thing in game number one, he's doing the same thing in game number two. At least now he's on the draw. So he gets to draw back to seven cards again. And there we see a basic forest here, and it looks like there's not a one drop here from Philip, just a pass turn. And let's see what Stefan can do. Can he find a one drop just like he did in game number one? There's a Pendlehaven. Oh, this is a really good start. With the script sprites again and the Pendlehaven combination. But what? Oh, this is nice. City of Brass, Mox Jet, and into a Stone Rain taking care of the Pendlehaven. And that must feel really good if you're Philip. Because Pendlehaven is such a strong card. I mean, just tap it to give you one ones plus one plus two bonus. It's just a really, really good card. And there is another Script Sprites. So early on pressure again from Stefan. And Philip is not casting anything, just passing turn here. That means he's probably going to take two more damage. Attacking here, that means he's going to go to 16. But there's a Terror. And that means he's going to drop down to 17. And here we see a Sylvan. Oh, a Force Spike. Oh, I really like this. I think it's really nice to see a Force Spike. Force Spike, a card from, I believe, Legends for one blue. You can counter target spell unless the opponent uh, pays an extra one. And then the spell is encountered. So Force Spike is one of those cards that is really useful at the start of the game. And he's managing to counter away the Sylvan Library, which is a very, very strong card. And there seems to be some discussion here about the dice. 
I think I think somebody got a marker there and changed the dots, which is pretty funny, but not very uh, very useful. Is he now on 17? I believe he is on 16, to be honest. And he is. He's on 16. Having a little talk about it. And Philip drawing a card here. There is another basic forest. It's a good thing for Philip that he has the City of Brass. That kind of gives him options. And of course, the Mox Jet. Remember, he does have a deck that plays four colors. Going to go to 15. There is a Lanawer Elves. And what is he going to do? It looks like he's going to play something out. He's going to go to 14. There's an Unsummon at the end step. And I wonder if he has maybe a Wheel of Fortune in hand or a Time Twister that he's playing out the Unsummon. Okay, there we see a Giant Spider. Giant Spider, of course, a really good answer to the script sprite. And let's see. There we see the Lanawer Elves again. And that's it, just passing turn here. So Stefan not really finding what he wants. There we see a Birds of Paradise. And are we gonna see, yes, the Wheel of Fortune. At the moment when he played that Unsummon, I was like, oh, you probably have Wheel of Fortune or Time Twister in hand. There is a Disenchant, by the way, from, uh, oh, again, he has to discard the If Biff, just like in game one when he uh, lost it to the Mind Twist. But hey, I don't think it's it's really a bad thing for Stefan as well because he gets to draw seven new cards also. And let's see what uh, what Philip can do. Now remember, the Birds of Paradise still has Summoning Sickness. So, I mean, maybe he can drop a Mox or he only has one green left, basically, to do anything with. And okay, okay, apparently he didn't have a land drop yet. So he's playing the strip mine, taking care of one of the dual lands, one of the savannas of Stefan and just passing turn. Playing a basic force, having five mana available with that Lanawer Elves. So he can do something this turn. Having a full grip of cards as well. There is a green ward and we saw this in game one as well. And now he can start attacking again. He can start dealing damage, and there is a circle of protection green to make matters worse for Philip. And I think just like I just like we talked about in game one, the problem here for Ooh, Ancestral Recall always nice. The problem for Philip is the fact that he's playing with so much green in his deck against a Labricon Ward deck, where you have to face a full playset of green wards and COP greens as well. Making it almost impossible here for, for Philip really to go for, uh, for a result. There's a Mox Ruby. I mean, he can use like a Fireball, for example, to kind of take care of the script sprites. Question is, do you really want to waste a Fireball? And okay, this is something. The Rook Egg. And followed up by a Demonic Tutor. Now remember the uh, Rook Egg is an 0-3 creature from the Arabian Nights. And when it dies, you get a 4-4 Drake token. The cool thing about this is, by the way, the Drake token is not considered an Arabian Nights card. So if you, for example, are facing a city in a bottle and you have your Rook Egg in play, your Rook Egg is discarded and you get back a 4-4 Flyer that can stay in the game. So it's actually some nice synergy there. And Philip looking at his deck, trying to pick a card that he needs. He's already played out the Ancestral Recall. I don't think he's going to look up a Time Walk because that's not really going to help him here. He doesn't have a Tranquility. So what is he going to do? I mean, what are his outs, basically? Maybe he just wants to win with a huge fireball or something? I mean, it's so difficult when you're playing against a deck that has so many things against green, which is one of your main colors. Dealing an extra damage, you're going to 10. Passing turn. So, I mean, Stefan is not doing too much. Things could be worse for Philip. The fact is he's on 10 and Stefan's on 20, so it's not looking good for him. He has to win this game if he wants to be able to win a match. 
Tapping for five here. What are we going to see? There's a fireball. And... Oh, he's changing the fireball into a green spell. And of course, because he has that green ward on it. Ooh, I, th I think that card's called Life Lace, right? Oh, man, it's really nice to see this. It's one green to cast. It's an interrupt, and it can change any card in green into green. And, of course, when you have a green ward, that's the perfect answer. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. And I actually think that, I hope not for Philip, but I think he used his Demonic Tutor to look up that fireball. And now all his plans are out of the window. And again, he's facing a script sprites. And again, he's slowly dying to a script sprites. Just too bad to see that giant spider cannot do anything because of the green ward. There we see a Sylvan library and things are not looking good for Philip again. Stefan still having 20 life so he can get some extra cards from the Sylvan. Yeah, let's see if, um, if Philip can come up with something here. Okay, at least this is something. Taunus is want. He can use it to make his Scorpion unblockable and at least deal some damage and put some poison counters on there. Four to cast, two to use, using it on the Pit Scorpion, attacking here for one. And hey, at least, at least there's a poison counter. That's something that you've accomplished here. But what can he do next? I think this is just a terrible matchup for Philip. Looking at his hand, I mean, he's all, well, he's not almost stepped out. He's got Birds of Paradise there. He's got a City of Brass and a Volcanic Island. So still having three mana that he can use. I mean, for example, if he has another Pit Scorpion, he can play it out. But does he really want to take the damage from the City of Brass? He's already pretty low on eight. And he's going to go to seven, probably. And now Stefan can look at his first three cards because of the Sylvan. And if he wants to get an extra card, he can do so just by taking four damage. He's still on 19. So if he wants to, he has more than enough life to do so. Looks like he's not choosing to do it, though. Just picking one card, attacking with the 1-1. One -one, that means Philip's going to drop to seven here. Tapping three. What are we going to see? Tapping the Lanawar Elves. Oh, he's tapping six. Oh, Force of Nature. Oh, that is nice to see. And look at that combo, Force of Nature and COP Green. So things are actually getting worse here for Philip before they get better. On the other hand, if he attacks with the Force of Nature, he can block with uh, the Egg. And oh, this is nice. A Time Twister. Oh, I like the spirit of Philip. He's not giving up. He's like, okay, maybe I can find something. Maybe there's something in my deck. Maybe I can change things around. And, you know, who knows? I think chances are, are close to zero, but you never know. It's still magic. You're not dead yet. You've got seven life. The thing is, if Stefan decides to attack next turn with the force of nature as well, then he's giving Philip the chance to block with his uh, Rook Egg and to basically get a 4-4 Flyer that is red. So his COP Green will not work against a 4-4 Red Flyer. On the other hand, he will probably have to block it with also the Giant Spider, for example, because he's so low, he's on 7, he doesn't want to take too much damage. So I wonder if Stefan is going to use his Force of Nature. Of course, it depends on what's in his hand. For example, if he's got another Life Lace, to make the 4-4 flyer green, then there's not really a problem. First, it's Philip's turn here after the Time Twister. Casting a Mox Jet, having more than enough land open still to play something out. Having the double Mox, the Birds of Paradise, and four lands to his disposal. Probably doesn't want to use the City of Brass, though, because he's already on seven. And I'm kind of now thinking about his deck and thinking, what could help him here? There's not really something that, that comes to mind. Maybe just a fireball. At least taking care of that annoying flyer. And he's looking at his hand in the tank here. Oh, he actually has double Birds of Paradise. I didn't see that. 
So he's got even more land. There's another giant spider. I mean, it's I understand he plays that out. You have an extra option if he decides to attack with the force of nature because giant spider has got four toughness. But it's not really going to change much. He needs an answer to that script sprite. Gonna attack it for one with the pit scorpion. So that means an extra poison counter and he's gonna pass turn. And we see Stefan untapping all his stuff. He's got a lot of stuff. Interestingly enough, he's keeping the basic planes tapped. I think, I think he can just untap that one. Not sure why. And also the script sprites. I guess he just still needs to do that. He's first looking at his three cards with the Sylvan. Putting one card, putting it back in order and just choosing to draw one card. So not taking any damage. And what is he going to do next? And playing another Savannah. <laughs> yeah, untapping and attacking again. Still not sure. Oh, of course, he's keeping the basic plane step because he used that mana to prevent the damage from the force of nature. And here we do see an attack by the force of nature. And we see that block by the Rook Egg. And that means he's getting a 4-4 flying Drake token. And I believe that actually happens at the end of the turn. Yeah, it's not really that relevant, but... And there is a veteran bodyguard. Wow, I was hoping to see this creature. 2-5, and all the damage that's dealt um, to Stefan from creatures, he can put that on the veteran bodyguard if he wants to. Or is it actually if he wants to, or does he have to? I'm not quite sure now. You don't see that card that often. It also always kind of reminds me of... Uh, Ah, uh, what's that movie again? Um, not David Hasselhoff, but you've got this movie with Patrick Swayze, I think, where he plays a bouncer. Kind of reminds me of that. I believe the movie is called... Um, what's it called again? Roadhouse. I think that's the name, Roadhouse. Um, by the way, just to get back to the Veteran Bodyguard, because I've, I've had some time to think about it, I think Veteran Bodyguard automatically soaks up all the damage from unblocked creatures so it's not an option so you know if he attacks with with two creatures of four four he takes the full eight damage you cannot kind of decide oh he's just going to take four because he's got five toughness and i'm going to take four myself doesn't work that way oh look at this wheel of fortune that is nice i really philip i really like your play style man you know, time twisters wheel of fortunes whatever that really makes games interesting and you've got beautiful black bordered a beautiful blackboard wheel of uh, fortune, by the way. And um, yeah, what I wanted to say is that Veteran Bodyguard does not work against any other damage that is dealt to you. So only creature damage. So if you play a huge fireball, unfortunately, you cannot put all that damage on your Veteran Bodyguard. I think it would have been better if it, if it would just read all the damage done to you goes to Veteran Bodyguard instead. I think that would make the card much more playable. And this is interesting. He's going to use his Tannis' Want, it seems, on his Giant Spider. Is that what he's going to do? And yeah, that's what he's going to do. He's going to attack. And that means the damage is being prevented with the Green Ward. Or can it be prevented with the Green Ward? And I think this was something that... Oh yeah, actually, Philip sent me a message... Uh, about this play where he said here we actually made a mistake because the mistake we made is we were thinking since the creatures unblocked the damage will automatically go to the veteran bodyguard so he takes two damage now that's what they decided to do but actually when they checked the rules afterwards and asked around it turns out that uh, it doesn't work that way so Stefan can now actually choose to prevent the damage with circle protection green or to let the damage go on his bodyguard now Obviously, in this scenario, he would have chosen to put the damage on a circle of protection. So instead, they said that's not possible. So in this scenario, they're thinking that the bodyguard has already taken two damage from the giant spider. And now he's going to flip um, his falling star. And falling star is quite nice because you can put cr the creatures you want together. And... You know, all the creatures it lands on, it deals three damage to. So I guess in this case, he's going for the script sprites and the veteran bodyguard. 
if he wanted to, he could have added the Lunar Elves to that, actually. So let's see. Let's look at the flip. He's taking his time, understandable. And I think he's first saying this is going to be a test flip. So this was a test flip. And now he's going to do the actual flip. And here he goes, actual flip. And... Yes, it's a full hit. So that means the script sprites and the veteran bodyguard are going to die. So unfortunately, this was not the way it should have been played rules-wise. But they did both agree on this. And it means that the veteran bodyguard dies here because it already took uh, two damage from, um, from the giant spider. So that makes it five in total with the falling star. And he also takes... Uh, yeah, and also three damage goes on the script sprites, I think, or not, because I think maybe they're discussing, did it flip, did it make a full rotation, yes or no. Oh, this is complicated, also because we can't really see the flip here on camera, so this is quite difficult. I think they're discussing this now. They're talking about it, like, did it make a full rotation or not? That's exactly what they're talking about. You can see Philip there in his hands. He's showing the rotation. Oh, you got to love old school where you have these weird scenarios. Oh. In all honesty, I don't think it matters that much because Philip's on, on five. But maybe it matters. Who knows? Anyway, uh, it looks like they, Stefan says, you know, it's it's all good. I believe you. I believe that it rotated. And uh, the veteran bodyguard is dead. The script sprites is dead. And it's still Philip's turn. He's he's got he's got some mana uh, still. He's got a volcanic island that's almost out of the screen. He's got a birds of paradise. He's got a mock sapphire and two basic lands there. And he's using it here to cast another pit scorpion. But I think his problem is that he's on five life and he's facing a force of nature. So he's going to untap now. Stefan is going to take the eight damage, but he's going to prevent it with his COP green. So everything's going really well here for Stefan. And now he gets the opportunity to attack. I mean, how can, how can Phillips still not lose this? He needs to salute. Maybe he's got an unsummon for the force of nature. That would be really nice. We know he plays with one unsummon. He also plays with uh, with a terror, but I don't think he can play that one out anymore. He doesn't seem to have any black mana available. Let's first see what Stefan's going to do. He's going to attack here with the force of nature, and there is the unsummon. Oh, man. I thought this game was played, but there's the unsummon, and... I mean, he's going to play it out, but he's got to think of the Force Spike as well. But it looks like he's got more than enough mana to end cast the Force of Nature and keep mana open for a possible Force Spike. But it looks like he's doing something else here. Tapping four, playing an If Biff of Freed, of course, that makes perfect sense. He cannot kill him, though, because he can only tap for four. And there is a Green Ward. And this is a really nice combo, putting a green ward on an if biff of freed. Remember, if biff has that built-in hurricane mechanic, so it's four to cast, uh, two green and two. It's a three-three from Arabian Nights, and you can pay one green, and then it deals one damage to each player, and one damage to each flyer. And the interesting thing here is that uh, Philip can also activate it, so he can basically kill himself if he wants to. And here we see Stefan pumping one green mana into it. Oh, or not. Is he? What is he doing? He wants to play a Spirit Link and then realizes, oh, I only have green mana left. So that's not possible. Spirit Link is also a nice combination. Because then the damage that you're dealing with the if biff to yourself uh, turns into life. And you also deal a damage to the if biff, which is prevented, but it also gives you life. So then you take one damage and you gain one life every time you activate the if biff. So that's that's also quite a nice combo. If biff for free is a really interesting card to to play with. If you're not familiar with it, look it up. It's it's quite interesting. It's a nice card. You can do a lot of funny stuff with it. And there we see the birds of paradise die because of that if biff activation. 
And I mean, I wonder if if Philip can find a way out of here. He found he found that unsummoned to deal with the force of nature. He found the falling star to deal with the script sprites. Can he find something to deal with the ifbif? Maybe a regrowth on the falling star and then falling star on the ifbif. That would work. Remember, he cannot block the ifbif with the giant spider because of that green ward. Tapping everything. What is he going to play? Oh, huge fireball. Oh, <laughs> and he's, I mean, he's staying alive. Wow, wow, wow. And I mean, Stefan can deal two more damage. That means he's going to go to 15. And it looks like Philip is going to drop down to two. But this is quite nice for Philip because he can attack here with everything he has. Remember that button there is a 4-4 token flyer. So he can deal 6-8 damage if he's going to attack with everything. And also give two poison counters. Or if, I guess, yeah, yeah, because he doesn't have any mana left for the COP green. Interestingly enough, though, he's not attacking with the giant spider. I think I would have attacked with the giant spider as well. But he's choosing not to do it. So we see Stefan here dropping to 13 and he's so close to victory, yet so far away here. Remember, he still has that force of nature in hand, so he can recast that. First, he's going to look at the top three cards because he's got that Sylvan Library. Choosing a card here, putting it back. And Philip is just really difficult to kill. That's probably what Stefan is thinking now. Like, why haven't I won yet? What's going on here? Tapping to white. And oh, he's playing a balance. Oh, that is brutal. All the creatures of Philip are gone here. Wow. And of course, uh, Stefan will have to discard quite a lot of cards. But he can still keep three, it seems. So I guess Philip has three cards in hand. They're counting their lands. But wow, what a blow here for Philip losing all those creatures. He finally got kind of back into the game. And this is risky what he's doing, playing that force of nature, knowing that Philip has a force spike. If he can play a force spike now, but he can't. So he's untapping. Is this the last turn for Philip? Is he going to lose this match now to the force of nature? He's counting his land, so he's up to something, taking a damage from his city of brass, going to one and just trying to play out as many creatures as he can. And I think he's forgetting to take uh, the uh, damage from the City of Brass. And now I guess all that Philip really can do is just block the Force of Nature with everything. And remember, Marsh Viper is a 1-2, so if he blocks with all three creatures, he actually survives another turn. So let's see what's going to happen here. Tapping two Zavannas. Okay, tap. No, okay, tapping... A forest and Savannah, casting a regrowth. What is he going to get back? A green ward, yeah. <laughs> green ward for the win. That is nice, Stefan. That is a really nice way to finish this. And um, the funny thing was in the deck tech section, and it's probably just me not really paying attention. In the deck tech section, I didn't realize how powerful green wards and COP greens, of course, are against Philip's deck because he's playing with so many green creatures. I just didn't put one and one together. And now I'm looking at these games. And it's like, this is a really terrible matchup for Philip, actually. But uh, congratulations, Stefan, with winning this. It's really great to see both of these decks uh, in action. And here we see uh, your deck list again. Uh, thank you for watching another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And if you want to see more of this tournament, then stick around because every week I am going to post a new match from uh, the Urborg Lions Plains Pillage here in Germany, Dusseldorf. And I've recorded everything. So all the way up to the finals. So this is round number three. We have round number four, round number five, quarterfinals, semifinals, and actually the finals. 
So there is a lot in store. If you enjoy this stuff, every Tuesday, come back here to Timmy Talks and you can see a new match. Now, if you want to support the channel and if you love old school, I'm sure you want to, you can do that by liking this video, leaving a comment, subscribing if you're not a sub yet, and you can also support Timmy Talks financially. And you can do that by becoming a Patreon, or I should say a patron on Patreon. There is a link, uh, a card popping up right now with the link. Click on that link that will take you to the Timmy Talks Patreon page and you can already support this YouTube channel starting at $1 a month and I really, really appreciate it. Talking about patrons, let's go to the end scroll and let's check out the fantastic, the amazing channel members and patrons of Timmy Talks. What shall we do with the Ik het als fikker te samba kan zien.